So one of you asked the other week, what were my main mindset obstacles of 2023? Am I open to sharing them? So I thought I would elaborate on this a little more in today's video. Now, something that I have really discovered over the last few years of my entrepreneurial journey is that mindset is key to you achieving everything that you want and you achieving nothing that you want. And I think when I started my business, Seven years ago now, I was more naive in regards to the concepts around mindset and how certain mindset shifts could actually help me move to my next level in business. And especially when you get to uh, the level that I'm at where we have turned over a million dollars, we do have a seven figure business. There are certain mindset things that you have to start paying attention to if you want to go to that next level. It's not more so a business strategy move, it's more so what things do I need to shift in my mind to allow me to call in my next level? And these are some of the things that I've been navigating in my own journey at the moment. Now, I'm going to talk about these through the lens of my business as a whole. So obviously, I don't just do product photography anymore. I'm also a course educator. I'm a business and mindset coach. And so our business has expanded a lot over the last few years, and it's going to expand even more this year with a new company on the horizon. So more about that in the future, hopefully near future. Um, but I'm going to talk about my mindset obstacles from the whole lens of my business, not just like as a product photographer. Now, the first thing that I'll talk about is through the lens of being a product photographer. And the thing that I have struggled a lot with for the last few years, I don't anymore. I have overcome this, thankfully, is the number of photo shoots that I felt I had to book in in order to feel successful in my business. Now, back in 2021, we had a lot of work going on in our business. We were incredibly burnt out. We were really exhausted, constantly stressed. I would wake up with like a knot in my stomach every morning from anxiety. And in our business, we were probably doing like 20 photo shoots a month. I think one time I counted 27 projects. Obviously that is not a very smart way to work. It's not sustainable. And it made me a very unhappy person. And part of that was taking on so many small projects. So we had a lot of inquiries coming through. We were still like servicing smaller budget projects. And by the end of 2021, I was just like, I'm so sick of this. I'm so exhausted. I'm not, I'm not really enjoying my business anymore. We need to make a change. And I wanted to work with larger projects. I could just sink my teeth into a couple of brands a month and like that would be it. But the thing that I struggled with was when I was making that transition, I had to increase my prices and that meant I lost clients and I had to bring in new larger clients. And obviously with that, that's a mindset battle in itself. And so it's kind of like, I had all the success over here. I felt so successful. Why don't I just go back to that? Because now I've lost clients and it feels a little bit hard to call in bigger projects. I don't feel as successful anymore. And so that was a bit of a mindset battle, but you don't want to go backwards. You don't want to go back to what was familiar for you. And I, I talk more about this in my high paying client coaching call as well. Um, about the concept of the reason why we don't move is we go back to something that feels more familiar to us. And that's why we don't reach our next level of success. So that's a whole conversation. And so moving through that transition at the time, I was also doing a lot of YouTube. I was working on become a brand photographer more and uh, making updates to that. I obviously also introduced coaching last year as well to my business. And so when you're doing so many different things, something has to give. And something that I struggled with in relation to this was letting go of my identity that I am just a product photographer, that my success is no longer only determined by the number of photo shoots I have booked into my calendar. And I remember there were times where I was like, oh shit, I don't have five photo shoots booked into my calendar but I'm you know, doing all these other things that are making me money, that are making me more money, that I also enjoy, oh, but I don't feel as successful because I haven't booked in five photo shoots. And so that was a mindset obstacle that I've had to overcome for the last couple of years. And that took quite a while for me to overcome as well, was to shift my identity from no longer just a product photographer towards 
I'm also a product photographer, but I'm a course creator. I'm a YouTuber. I'm a business and mindset coach. And that's what I am today. And I have fully claimed that part of my identity now. But if you are a product photographer where maybe you have made that transition from small budget, small brand to more high paying client projects, and maybe you're seeing less inquiries now because you're not getting all the small brand, small budget inquiries coming through, but you're getting high quality leads, you have to kind of update your version of success as you move along that journey so that you don't get caught in the old patterning of, oh, well, I used to do 15 photo shoots a month. That was my base level line of success. That's what I have to be still doing. No. <laughs> okay, the next mindset battle that I have had is shaking the nine to five mindset and working smart, not working harder. Now I come from a nine to five background. So before I became a product photographer, I worked in project management. I used to work in a call center back in university. I worked in administration. Um, I worked in finance. And so I, I had these like corporate jobs. And when you're working Monday to Friday, nine to five, sometimes longer, um, that's how you're conditioned. You know, that's how even as a as children, we're conditioned to grow up to be like, yep, I'm gonna to go to university, get this nine to five job, and that's gonna be my life. That's literally what I believed that I had to do for my career when I was growing up and going through university. And it has probably taken me a good six years to shake the nine to five mindset and that I have to work hard for my money. So there's a difference between like working hard where it's actually required of you, where you're pushing through to get to a result that you really, really want versus working hard when you're just procrastinating. So maybe sometimes in your day, you're filling up your day with procrastination tasks because it feels like you're being productive. It feels like you're being busy. It feels like you're working, but you're actually not really getting anywhere. And so part of that is being self-aware when you're just sitting there and you're not being productive, but maybe you feel guilty for not working. So you force yourself to just try and be productive, but you're doing like stupid busy tasks that aren't actually gonna move your money needle forward. So every day I think about what are my high priority tasks that are going to move my money needle forward. And I no longer kind of just sit there at the end of my day being like, I've still got another hour until like, I know it's five or six o'clock. Uh, what else could I do? I've already done so much today, but like, is there something else that I could do? No, I'm gonna go and relax. I'm gonna go and chill. I'm gonna go to the spa or I'm gonna go to the pool or I'm gonna go to the gym or to yoga and do something for me. And so a lot of people feel guilt when they don't work. And this probably also comes from maybe their childhood where they see their parents working so hard for their money because they have to. And I was definitely exposed to that as a child. I would always see my parents working so hard for their money, right? That's how we're conditioned to believe that to earn money, you have to work hard, but you can work smart and still earn a substantial amount of money. And so the thing that I've also found is that by having rest, by giving my brain a break and stepping away from my business, that's actually when I get my best ideas. That's when things come to me where I'm like, oh, that would be an amazing thing to do. Or like, oh, that's a great piece of content. All those things come to me when I'm not actively working. And so I started to rewire the whole work hard for money to rest is productive and I can still work smart and earn the same amount of money, if not more. And the next mindset obstacle that I have experienced, and this has been for the last few years, this is probably one I'm still overcoming. I'm still navigating it and working on it. And that is dimming my light to fit other people's opinions. Now, when I was at the start of my business and building it, there was such an incredible excitement there. Even when I was starting to build the course, you know, I didn't have all these eyes on me. Like the course has nearly 1300 students in there now. I think when you're doing education, it comes with a certain level of responsibility. Um, and you're gonna get hit with so many other people's opinions. You're gonna get hit with people who throw hate comments at you, who criticize you. And it's all very well to say, oh, don't listen to the haters, you know, like they don't know anything. And that's like, I know that. But when you're faced with that kind of 
hate and you read that comment, you can't help but to sometimes internalize it. And you can't help but to react to it in a way where it's like, am I too much? Did I say something wrong? Oh my God, this person thinks this. Do other people think this as well? That's where your mind goes. And so it's taken a long time for me to get past the fear of I'm not for everybody. I'm not for everybody. I know that. And for those who do want to be in my world and be part of my trainings and my programs or just be part of like my community on Instagram and YouTube here, those those are the people that my content is for. And so the thing that I always come back to, and if you are someone who is struggling to maybe uh, put yourself out there and express your personality and connect with your audience and just like show up as your authentic you, something that I always come back to is what is my purpose? So I am not focusing on the outcome. I'm focusing on what value can I provide today? I am driven by helping people. I get so much fulfillment out of seeing other people excel and find their own success. And I love helping people find their own success. For me, that comes from when I used to work in corporate, I know how it feels to be stuck in a job that you feel like, you know, you're settling for it. I literally thought that when I used to work back in finance, I was like, cool, this is it. I'm going to go climb the corporate ladder and this is going to be my life. And I don't know what else I'm passionate about. Like, I guess this is it. I literally thought that. And that was kind of sad. And I wasn't happy in any of my jobs (laughs) until I found photography and I fell in love with it. And I was like, what do you mean you can make money doing something you love? Like this was back in 2017. And now there's so much opportunity out there in the online world to build a business for yourself. Um, And I just, I want other people to experience that. And I know that there are a lot of mindset battles of, of like, well, I can't do that. She just got lucky or like, well, she's in a better circumstance than me or like whatever. We make excuses. But I can promise you that if you want something and you want it bad enough, like you'll do anything to make it happen. I did anything to make it happen for myself. I was like, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be working for someone else. I want to go and do my own damn thing. I want to go and run my own business. And I want to wake up without an alarm. And I don't want to have to drive anywhere to go to work. I don't want to commute anymore. I want to sit on my couch at lunchtime, have my lunch and watch TV. I want to have afternoon naps at 3 p.m. on my couch. I don't want to be stuck in front of a computer until a certain time. All of those feelings drove me to building my own business and wanting it so badly that I I did anything to make it happen. And that's a huge reason why I went into education and coaching because I have that passion there to help people to change their life. Because I changed mine and I know it's possible and I know that. I know that you can do it too. Now, the next mindset obstacle that I experienced, and this was definitely more so in the last like year and a half, um, was finding happiness outside of my business. So I feel like for the first three to four years, my business consumed my life. It was always my first priority. It came even before my health a lot of the times. Uh, That's why I went into burnout. And I feel like you reach a point in business where you achieve a certain level of of success. You've booked the big clients. You've had incredible financial months and you're now looking for something else. It's like, cool, another client. Oh my God, that client's amazing. Awesome. It doesn't like excite you as much as it used to. It's still exciting. Like, don't get me wrong. I still get really excited when we do book a really big brand. Um, But it's not as exciting as it used to be. And so I found that I was trying to search for more happiness outside of my business. And what I found was when I reached a certain level of financial success, my day-to-day didn't really change that much. Yes, there were more things that I could invest my money in, like property. Uh, We could obviously go on, you know, larger holidays. 
I don't want to be traveling multiple times a year, to be honest. It fucking exhausts me. <laughs> I'm such a homebody and I love being at home and I love working on my business. And so to be constantly traveling isn't something that, you know, is for me. A couple of holidays a year, perfect. Maybe one or two. That's great. Um, and so what I was really trying to find is happiness in my everyday life, in my everyday routine and finding more of a sense of inner peace in those habits. And that's when I started offering coaching because that felt really exciting to me. And I think when you're running a business and you're moving along your journey, you have to ask yourself, am I still excited? Am I still excited by what I'm doing? What excites me? Because you will reach a level where you kind of plateau a little bit and you're like, I've done it all. (laughs) I got that. I got that. And I got that. So what's next? And I remembered for me, it's that part of my purpose is connecting with you guys. Part of my purpose is sharing my message and helping other people go full time in their product photography business, earn more money in their business, move to that next level in business, earn $10,000, $20,000 months. That's what I'm here to help other people do. And I just have to remind myself of that purpose and of that mission. And something else that I'll mention along those lines as well is for a little while there, I was very attached to a monetary outcome. So I was like, I need to make this amount of money per month or like, I want to make this amount of money per month. And the thing that I realized was that if you focus too much on the outcome, if you focus too much on the attachments to money and that's all you focus on, the money won't come. (laughs) The money won't come, trust me. You have to focus on your value and you have to focus on your purpose. And that's where you can ask yourself the question, well, what excites me? What would make my business exciting again? And those are the questions that I've been asking myself. What feels exciting to me now in business? So if you're feeling lost, if you're feeling like you've kind of lost that spark a little bit, and this is probably more so for the product photographers who are a few years in, maybe you're five years in, heck, even 10 years into your product photography business. If you feel like, I don't know if this is like doing it for me anymore. You know, I don't know why I've lost the joy. Ask yourself, what will excite you again? And explore that. Explore what that could look like for you in your business because there aren't any rules. You can do whatever you want in your business. You can create whatever you want in your business. So you may as well create something that lights you up every single day, that excites you to get out of bed. And that is going to evolve at every single stage of your business. And to finish that off, the other thing I'll say is that it's not always just about what's exciting in your business. It's what's exciting in your life or what are the other goals that you have for your life? I found that when I would write down my goals for the year, they were always business related. (laughs) Funny that. They were always business focused. And I'm like, I have a life. I have a life outside my business, don't I? And so it's something that I've really been focusing on, um, especially this year, is focusing on other things outside of my business. So at the moment, I'm focusing a lot on my, my health and getting more fit and toned. Like that is a challenge to me. Like I'm going through a challenge to try and tone my body up more. And so that's become another daily focus for me. And that has nothing to do with my business. And that's been actually very refreshing. We just moved into a brand new building. And so I'm also focusing on, cool, are there like new friendships that I can create here? Are there new people that I can meet? When I used to live in my old building, I would barely ever leave my apartment. I barely saw anyone in my days, whereas here, I get to see people. I'm just like, oh, good morning. Hello. You get to have a chat with your neighbor or you see the same people over and over again. And it's really refreshing to put yourself out there in a way where you start to get that social interaction every single day again. And if you work from home, you probably know what I mean. It can get really lonely working at home when you're just isolated by yourself and you don't speak to anybody. And so you end up just speaking to your phone, to Instagram or to YouTube. Um, And so that's something that I'm really enjoying at the moment as well is opening myself up to new people and making new friends and just being a friendly person. 
So for me, those have been the main mindset obstacles that I've experienced for the last two years. Some I have overcome, some I'm still navigating, and I'm sure there are going to be other mindset obstacles that I end up facing as we introduce another company to our ecosystem. Um, And that's going to be a whole other chapter. So I hope that you've been able to take away something helpful from this. I'm definitely speaking from a little bit of a higher level of having achieved so much and that even with achieving so much still comes mindset obstacles and battles that you have to overcome. And that's what I've been experiencing. So if you have any questions, uh, let me know if you want to have a chat, leave a comment. Um, Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.